Man, I don't even know how to really start off this video, but goddamn, The Witcher 3 is just such a beautifully designed game. Immediately from starting the game, I was awed how life was given to the characters due to the banter. They seemed like they could be real people, if not for the magic-y Witcher bits and all that. Like, the banter between Geralt and Vesemir in particular is very good, joshing around with each other just like old friends. And Ciri being a proper mischievous child prodigy, as well as a proficient gaslighter of poor old Vesemir, is pretty accurate to how children should be portrayed as little shitheads. At the start of the game, you have this epic cinematic where it seems like you're chasing this powerful witch lady with a badass raven, but you always seem to be just one step behind. Watching her trap between two incoming armies shows the struggles going on in the game world, and then boom, she does some crazy ass magic shit, and we see her riding off in the distance once more. We then awake in a bathtub, where Geralt spreads his legs at the camera with no socks on, so that's kinda gay. But then he is quickly nipped by some kind of lobster demon that this naked woman sent to prod him to hurry up. We are introduced to this woman as Yennefer, and man, is she smoking hot. Like, sheesh. Geralt is definitely not maidenless. We get to do some friendly banter with this lovely lady, and we realize the woman that we are chasing in the opening cinematic is actually this Jennifer. She does usual female partner things, nagging the lazy man to go and do the things he's supposed to do. And he does, eventually, as all men do. He goes down to train with Ciri, and here we are introduced to how mischievous this little demon is. She not only studied the entirety of the Gooba Gob Ghoul versus All Ghoul section of her book, but also went out and started doing some crazy ass backflips with a sword on the edge of a cliff. Absolute badass. After the short tutorial bit, you awaken to realize it was a dream of fonder times, and you were on the hunt for your baddie, Yin, who, which I swear this is important, considering how they mentioned it a billion times, smells of lilac and gooseberries. From my understanding, you were hunting for that swiggity swiggity booty. She left a note saying where she's off to, and Vesemir wants to take a look at it. At the bottom of it, it says, P.S. I still have the stuffed unicorn. Naturally, Vesemir is like, what's this about? And Geralt embarrassingly replies, something along the lines of it's a stuffed unicorn we used it as a bed sometimes for things Vesemir then chuckles and makes some typical old man comment about you kids nowadays now onto some more serious bits in the real stuff that to me the witcher 3 does better than most open world games do today world building in the witcher you really feel the tension of the war even just from the first town people hanging from trees, and the guardians being hated by most, even if they aren't necessarily in the wrong. They conquered the land and killed their king, so of course the loyal civilians are going to be angry with them. For instance, I was traveling back from accepting the griffin quest to go and talk to the hunter and the herbalist. On my way, I heard someone yelling out for me, so I got off my horse and went over to them. They seemed distraught, telling me of how they were a merchant, and some drowners came out of nowhere and spooked the horse off to the left into the water. He really needed this small box of goods off the cart, it seemed, so... Naturally, me being the good Samaritan I am, I accepted his quest and went off to investigate in detective witcher mode. I followed the cart tracks into the water, eventually finding the horse and the cart. But strangely enough, the cart was shot with arrows, and if you've played the witcher, you know that drowners don't use bows. But the guy we accepted the quest from had one slung around his back. That's strange, right? Why would you shoot your own cart? So after some investigating, we find the box, and then I find a dead body lying near the cart with an arrow through his neck. Seemingly, this was the poor cart driver who had been shot clean through the neck by the man who enlisted my help. I went back to the guy and was like, yo, what the hell, bro? Why'd you lie to me? He then said, I'm an ex-soldier for the Temerian army, and that was a Nilfgaardian medicine supply cart, so I killed him. Now, the people of Temeria are kind of assholes to me. Like, I walked into a tavern and was very loudly insulted and spit at and such, and they said that they would rather die than have a drink in the same tavern as me. So I have really no sight in this war. Although, the Nilfgaardians have not insulted me yet, so in the conversation, I was like, dude, you're a murderer, and I'm taking you to the Nilfgaard dudes. He was in like, ah, you're a filthy traitor mutant, and some other slurs thrown at me. And he hopped on his horse to try to run away. Big mistake. Because unluckily for him, I'm the fastest rider this side of Kaer Morin, and I caught his dumb ass swiftly, swatting him off his horse and dragging him back to the Nilfies. After arriving, I had turned him in and got some coins in exchange for the medicine I dropped off. It just felt so awesome that a potentially meaningless little side quest had that much depth to it. So then we went back on our merry little way, traveling to the herbalist's hut where we were met with quite the sassy and caked up alchemist, who had a patient that had been smacked up by a griffin pretty badly. Here we were presented with a choice. Let her die slowly and peacefully with the herbalist treatment, or give her one of our witcher potions which could heal her, but could also have adverse side effects. Me being the caring man I am, I wanted to save the girl. So I whipped up a potion and then eventually gave it to her. The herbalist then said something along the lines of, I like you. People like you who aren't willing to stand by and do nothing. 
and she then gave me my money back that I had to spend to make the potion. Even as I was leaving the shack, I was left wondering what's going to happen to the patient. Would they die an agonizing death? Scream so loud that even the village could hear her in pain? Or would she get better and go about her life, forgetting that ever happened? Either way, I assumed there was really no way that I would ever find out. But then later on when playing, I opened up my journal to find they had added some information to the quest. It said that she recovered from the griffin wound successfully, but the potion had basically melted her mind and she was simply a husk of a person. It left me thinking, did we do the right thing? Should we have just left her to die peacefully? Or was the chance of her being able to be with her love again worth the risk of her brain melting? These are the questions this game makes you ask yourself. This is what role-playing games should be about, making you fully embrace the role of that character. Can you make the hard choices? Can you kill that one person who doesn't really deserve it to save hundreds more? It's easy to put your life on the line, but is it easy to put someone who you hold dear's life on the line? Is it easy to hold a stranger's life in the palm of your hand? Where even a small mistake could mean a child grows up without his parents. This is why I love RPGs. They really make you think. I mean, sure, hack and slash and casting your way around the world is fun, but you can do that in any old game. What makes The Witcher 3 special to me is really the way it makes you consider even your smallest actions. The fact that even just doing that little side quest with the ex-soldier could have meant the resistance got more medicine. Had I not given it back to the Nilf Guardians, and it might have caused them to be able to push out the Black Ones from their home. This is really what video games are all about, at least in my opinion. Being able to escape reality and enter into another. Being able to critically think about everything and to live in a well thought out crafted world that has both rewards and consequences. This is why I love The Witcher 3. Thank you for watching. I really enjoyed working on this video. If you don't want to see more, then don't hit that big red subscribe button down below. We're trying to hit daily uploads this year, so stay tuned for more. There'll be lots of experimentation with video style, so let us know which ones you like best by, well, you know, hitting the like button. With that, peace.